whatever, 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 whatever. Greetings, uh, my sacred siblings. <sighs> Today, um, I've got the windows open in the living room. Perhaps you can hear that. Bummer. Probably didn't mean to do that. But, you know, once we start meaning to do shit on this show, maybe we fucked it up. The for nice cold beer, not a sponsor of the episode. But... A full-time sponsor, my good attitude today. I don't know if you can tell. I feel a little disheveled. I feel a little bit out of sorts today. I feel like uh, I'm not necessarily trying to talk about my life today. <clears throat> I had a very dramatic day helping out a friend yesterday. And I cannot tell that story yet. So I'm going to avoid it as much as I can, but it's on the top of my mind. So I want to talk about it like I did just then. I, I had a dramatic day helping out a friend. I can't talk about it yet uh, because there's a court case pending and now I just can't talk about it any more than I just did. But if I'm fucking being weird, it's because of that. Um, today I decided to answer um, a question that I got. And hello, Bunk. Hello, Martin. Who else is here? I don't know. It's happening so fast. Uh, today I'm going to take uh, a question from my inbox and see if I can turn that into an episode. We're 53 some odd, I think, episodes into the show here and I uh, haven't really done any requests or topical things, uh, which is strange. Might, and it might also explain the l lower viewership of this show. Um, today I want to talk about a few different things, but um, I, got a, I got a note from a friend and the thing it was like, I wish you'd talk. Uh, in the show about why you dress the way you do and if you have any tips for, for a normal guy. I respect the normal people out there that uh, that aren't obsessed with the things I'm obsessed with, uh, but I'm happy to explain the fucking thing I'm doing. Um, I, I, um, I consider myself a, uh, a communicator and my, my mode of communication, my medium is through beauty. So I study beauty for a living. I believe that's my job as an artist, is to communicate through beauty. How many times can I say that in a different way in a row? Um, and so I, I, I try and like dress beautifully when I can. Um, it, I do it for me, it feels so good. But also it's just sort of a, a good practice to help me not be depressed. Um, I don't know if any of you guys struggle with that stuff, but I do. And um, I don't mind saying so. Uh, it's a, a almost daily uh, battle for me to not feel depressed and completely uh, debilitated. So uh, getting dressed uh, makes me feel powerful. My version of uh, beautiful, as good as it's going to get. For me, it's like a nice white shirt and like a little blue jacket, maybe a little pocket square like this. It's better if it shows up a little bit more in the fucking camera. The, the fucking filming part of this is actually one of the tougher parts of the gig because maybe it's nice that like you can't tell that I haven't ironed any part of my shirt uh, <laughs> except for like the most the most bare minimum section that I possibly could and still be able to say I made a I made an effort I, I have this section of my shirt ironed because it's a quarantine show I don't I've never even stood up on this show before so what the fuck why would I worry so much? Here, maybe this pocket square will be a little cooler. I got them in front of me because I wanted to kind of talk about this stuff today. I mean, kind of a cool effect, right? Isn't that a cool effect? It's just sort of like this friendly little flourish in your jacket to let them know you care about beauty. Um, who's them? I don't know. Them, the people in your brain, you know? Um, so, uh, I want to talk about two... Little things in that area today. I want to talk about kind of like basic masculine beauty aesthetics. And then I want to, I want to talk about one other trick that you can do. Uh, this episode fucking not brought to you by anybody. Except motherfuckers want to know how to be a little bit more beautiful in their masculine way. Good for you, friends. Um, my personal um, spiritual practice is dedicated toward 
maximizing the masculine power within me and the feminine power as well to get the results I'm looking for. Uh, and so as part of that has taken me down the road of studying my own feminine nature. And this is not necessarily related to sexuality. This is more related to uh, modes of thinking. So, oh, hey, Stephanie. Oh, my God. Stephanie says she was impressed with my attire the first time she met me. Well, golly. Uh, that's a nice compliment. Tasty cold beard, not a fucking sponsor of the show. But um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a, as an artist, I've gotten interested in this shit. So one thing you can do as a man to instantly up your kind of basic beauty level is, uh, I, I, in my opinion, get a white button-down shirt, preferably long-sleeved, even though I'm totally wearing a short-sleeved shirt under this jacket. It's against the rules. Um, long sleeve slim cut if you can manage it um white shirt and then uh you fucking create a v effect with your buttoning if you, as far down as you dare i do it that far but definitely this is an answer as well the only really wrong answer is this i think unless you're like going to literally a board meeting you don't need to be buttoned up that much basically ever if you're going to undo the top one, my opinion is, do the next one, too. That My dad would fucking do that. You know, grow up. Me, though, I let it go one more because, like, I'm just in fuck it I don't really care what happens anymore. And I like it. I like to create more of the V effect. What you're going to try and do with your clothing, gentlemen, is you're trying to create shapes with your clothing. You're trying to accentuate the shapes that are already in your body. But there are some basic aesthetic ideas that work on everybody. Nice square shoulder, that works on just about everybody. That's why a nice little sport coat or a blazer or whatever suddenly makes you look more handsome. Because you just look a little bit more symmetrical. And, you know, for a lady, and obviously there's lots of right answers. But for, let's just keep talking about for men, I guess. For a man, you're looking for basic shapes. Nice kind of hard edge kind of shapes. Um, a nice square in the shoulder, a nice kind of V headed down the body. Um, that, that's kind of what you're looking for, very powerful masculine shapes. Feminine clothing oftenly, often will have um, more of the rounded um, shapes, even like a female, a, fe a feminine um, kind of a, uh, approach to a collar does seem to have a little bit more shape to it. Now, that's not to say that, you know, if you have a dick, you're not allowed to wear clothing with rounded shapes on it. That's not what I'm saying. Or, or the vice versa. That's not what I'm fucking saying. What I'm saying is, um, if you're talking about basic, stereotypical, masculine beauty, the, th the thing James Bond is doing that everybody fucking likes is the shit I'm talking about. Um, and, uh, I don't know, also just for the season. That's, that's the other side of it. I recently got a haircut, as you can see. It's much fucking shorter than my hair usually is, but I just told my hair lady fucking give me the, the summer fuckable, you know? Just the summertime fuckable. Give me vaguely fuckable. Just give me in the neighborhood. Um, so, a little jacket, little white shirt. Even like if you're not going on a date, it's just nice to feel pretty. And I do recommend a little pocket square for yourself that costs fucking nothing. And all it is is like a little piece of silk like this. You know, it's usually got kind of two designs on it. And you can kind of take it like this, okay? Give it a little twist. And now here's a shape you can put in your pocket. Or you can turn it upside down, right? And you do it the other way. Let me get a brighter one so I can see the texture change I'm talking about. Okay. little twist gives it the fucking sexiness. You want it to look like you just jammed it the fuck in there. You know? So, if I, and here's another one. You can kind of tell what color patterns, you know, what colors you can totally fit in with this. You wear yourself a nice tan jacket, nice blue jacket. You're going to look real sexual in that. But I just like doing this kind of thing. Turn it up like this. And you got your spikes. I consider that a little more casual, but a fucking cool look. 
you know? There are going to be a couple right answers and wrong answers. I think that if you're talking about white, for instance, and it's going to look like shit on camera right now, I think white, pure white, is actually probably the most formal and looks kind of the most flower-like. So that's probably the most casual version you could ever make of that. But you can also take these, of course, and fold them up or blah, blah. I don't find the fold to be very moving, you know? Something like this, just like a little square on the top of your jacket. I think that's sort of dumb. If you're gonna have it, why not make a choice? It's fine, it's fine, right? That's what James Bond would have, just kind of like a accentuation there, pointing at the shirt. That's a little too fucking tame for me, you know? I don't know if you can tell what kind of person you're dealing with, but that's the fucking kind. You know, so for me, I'm looking at that kind of a thing. I can't believe I'm sitting here talking about this, but I got asked about it, so what am I supposed to do? That's what I'd be doing, but it looks like shit on camera, so I'm going to try and choose something a little more camera friendly here. I'm just doing the same move with all these, but there's a few, a few variations, a few different moves you can do. Now see, I think that is even like pretty fucking conservative. But it's fun to, like, be conservatively dressed and then be a far-out motherfucker. You know what I'm saying, friends? So there you go. There's, like, a cool version of that. See what I mean? See, it just kind of looks cool. Took me just a second to do it. It's going to stay that way forever. And it doesn't cost anything. They're, like, a dollar each online. And, you know, if somebody that wants to blow their nose in it, you can tell them to keep it. You know what I mean? Or you can like um, hand it to somebody and it'll, you can like put a little of your perfume on it, which will be the next thing we talk about. Put a little bit of your perfume on it. And not a lot, you're not chloroforming a motherfucker, but if they, if they need to, you know, fuck a, a tiny little hint of your smell on it, it'll help connect you to the memory when they pull it out later. Just saying. Now, the other thing you can fucking do, gentlemen, to be uh, a little more artful in your approach for how you, uh, move through the world. Another thing you can do is smell nice. Oh, I know you don't stink, and I'm not trying to tell you that you stink. I'm not trying to tell you that you're a fucking old stinky old bitch with your fucking balls all smelling like cheese or whatever. I'm not saying that. But here's what I am saying, is you're not putting weight on the other side of the scale of that issue. You're not actively trying to smell good, and if you are, you may be using something out of a can from the grocery store. I can't recommend that, friends. I can't recommend that. I have to recommend proper perfumes. And so now I'm going to recommend to you some affordable perfumes of varying, I guess, price range. If I'm going to have a lot of affordable stuff in here, I'm going to talk about this stuff and uh, give a few summertime man recommendations. Happy 420. Oh my god. Oh, I'm so high now. Looks like somebody might be delivering something at my house. That would be weird. Um, so, really quickly then. Um, I've, I've got four recommendations that you maybe ought to look at. And then one that I definitely don't want you to purchase. Okay? Uh, first thing I want to talk about is this one. This one You probably won't be able to read it because it'll be backwards on your screen. It's called Versace Blue Jeans. Versace Blue Jeans. Um, nice uh, kind of like spice, fresh spicy kind of vibe. It really does sort of remind me of, I don't know, like a big stack of clean denim. This smells sort of like fresh, clean, spicy. That's how I'd recommend this for you. If you like fresh, clean, spicy, I think you can get this shit for about 15 bucks if you're looking around pretty hard. Um, the next one. Um, this is by Jean Vervatos. It's called Artisan Aqua. Jean Vervatos Artisan Aqua. You can get this one around all the time. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
It's such a juicy smell, man. And I, I've actually reviewed this one on my YouTube channel. And I said it smelled like a sexy well. And this is, this is sort of my aquatic choice for you. If you like kind of ocean vibe without like, I know it's got just a little bit of saltiness, a little bit of sweetness, a lot of flowers happening. Um, but it's a very masculine smell, very clean. Clean's good for the summer. Sweet's not very good for the summer, unless it's very specific. Um, because in high heat, the fucking sweet is the fucking devil. Uh, all right, another one. Uh, Aqua di Gio Profumo. Okay, now this is an Italian brand and it's got uh, incense and patchouli as two of the main notes. This smells very clean and fresh as well. Um, but that incense note really makes it more of like a mature and um, uh, it's more of a compelling smell. It's, it's uh, everybody's gonna like this, but it's not necessarily come fuck me. It's more like, you know, cause I'm the boss and I smell good and I'm a professional and shit. If you're needing to smell good in the office, you could wear any of the stuff I've already talked about and you'd be pretty safe. It, you, uh, we can talk about how much you're supposed to put on at later, maybe. But uh, this is for like uh, even more the office um, or just a hot day out with your friends. You won't regret smelling like this, but you're also not going to just murder everyone with it. So that's good. Uh, and the last one I have to re recommend is Chanel Allure Om Sport. I do, I do. I think somebody's coming to my house. <laughs> it's always the worst. I never know why people bother me. It's quarantine! All right, anyway. Chanel Allure Homme Sport. This is the one I'm wearing today. Uh, this is the sweetest of the bunch here. Uh, it's got kind of a roundness to it. It's got um, a little bit of like a vetiver vibe. Um, this is uh, Allure Homme Sport O Extreme. You can see it there. Allure Homme Sport O Extreme is um, a flanker to the, to the original. And uh, I believe it to be a better smell. Uh, but this one's probably the most expensive on this list. This is like a 70 plus dollar bottle of perfume. And it's one of the fancier ones I've got. One more! This one I don't think you should buy. This is uh, Liz Claiborne's Curve. You'll know it by its classic green and gold um, color scheme, which is just so bad. Here, I've got actually got some tissue here. I can spray this and we can just bitch all about this. Oh God. Oh, not too much. Oh God. Yeah. God damn it. This shit smells so bad. This shit, Liz Claiborne's curve for men. It smells like God help us. It smells like if Spree could take a piss. It's the worst. God, it smells like it smells like bug spray had sex in the back of a van. It's the worst. God, it smells like um it smells like if they embalmed your grandmother in this, you'd send her back. You know what I mean? Not even as good as the embalming fluid. Liz Claiborne's not a, uh, not a sponsor of the show, if you can't tell. I hate this fragrance. About 15 bucks for this shit uh, that I've just flushed down the motherfucking toilet. And uh, I keep it. You know, I, I know other people that, that it smells better on, I guess. But, boy, there's just a million better answers. Not this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Do one of this. The fucking, if you're a classy, uh, beautiful man and you want to fucking have some um, 70 or $80 perfume on, that's your shit. Chanel, one of the best houses. Chanel Allure Open Sport Eau Extreme. Very good. Little more uh, affordable, the Aqua de Gio Profumo. There are three real famous Aqua de Gio's. The original. Aqua de Gio, which is one of the most popular. Jesus Christ, get this away from me. 
fuck, I sprayed too much of that bullshit. Do I balance it out? No, 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 no. Just let it, just live with what you did. God damn it, that's bad. Oh, Ravazzi, I miss you too, dear. <sighs> Aqua de Gio, you got the original, you got this one. This is the Profumo, uh, more incense. And then they've got the Absolute, which is their kind of like amber aquatic. And um, I know f a lot of famous reviewers don't really dig that one, but I think it's fucking ballerific magic. Uh, I, I wore it while I was overseas or whatever, and it was like one of the only fragrances I chose to take because I was going to be sweating my ass off, but I still wanted a little bit of the s balanced sweetness of that fragrance. Wonderful fragrance. Full send on all three of those, I'm afraid, even though your dad probably wears it. Now, dads can be cool, man. Get over yourself. A um, little cheaper still, the Jean Valvatos uh, Artisan Aqua. Uh, there's a whole big old line of these, and um, some of them are good, some of them are a little fucking um, abrasive, but this one's perfect for me. It's got a cool, it's, you, you know, it's got a cool bottle. You don't wear the fucking bottle, but there it is. It's a cool bottle, and um, it smells fucking way, way monster good better, you know? Oh, yeah, man. God, that one's good, man. And that one you could probably score for 50 bucks, 40 bucks, you know. I think I picked this up at a Ross for like 30 bucks or something like that. And I felt real, real good about it. Uh, and I still wear this. Uh, I still get compliments on all this stuff or I wouldn't be telling you about it. Um, and then the Versace Blue Jeans. It does not smell as cheap as it is. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a very good compliment. It's Versace. But it's like one of their, their low-end fragrances. But, you know, man, if it smells good and gets you compliments, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what we're looking for, right? So Versace Blue Jeans, for sure, will do that. And it's like, this is the bargain basement fragrance on the show here. This is, uh, I think I scored this at uh, Ross as well, or Marshalls or some shit, and it was like 15 fucking bucks. 15 bucks is usually the danger zone. You you do not want to wear a $15 perfume. That is almost a guarantee. And I paid 15 bucks for this shit. And it's, you know, not bad. It's not like the total, um, I don't know, sex potion or something like that. It's not sex panther. There are no bits of real panther in this. But, uh, you know... It does smell clean and it's spicy and, and masculine, um, classically masculine, I guess we should say. Um, it's a good smell, man. Uh, full send on all these. Um, there is not a link in the description. There's no more explanation. I'm not even going to write it out. That's the information. Those are the things I recommend. And now I'd like to go back to like not talking about myself as much. Because I'm glad that we answered this question about, like, why I dress the way I do and, like, what are maybe some tips or whatever. We went over a couple. You know, fucking trim your genital hair. How about that? You know, I've got a little note from the fucking everyone you'll ever talk to candidly. Yo, you might as well trim it. <clears throat> you might as well trim it. Just, you know, there. Magic three ideas there. The white shirt, blue jacket. Go for it. Always a good idea with the fucking pocket square. That's what we're talking about. That's the first thing. Second thing, perfumes. Gave you some ideas there. Good for you. Third thing, you know what it was. You know what it was. You know what it was. Cold Tasty Beers now to sponsor the episode. Have you got a bowl with you? Are you smoking bowls with me right now? That's sort of what this show is. Hey, Paul, how you doing? I bet you're not smoking a bowl, but I'll smoke it for you. Here we go. Ready? This one's for Paul. Oh, well, it's a good one, Paul. Oh, it hit me real low in the lungs, Paul. This is a good one, Paul. Oh, I hope you can feel it where you are, man, because uh, I'm telling you what, man. I had a bad day yesterday and uh, sort of having a mixed day today. 
But like being able to talk to everybody like this and being able to fucking smoke a monster bowl on behalf of Paul out there. Oh, Paul, you, you, you'd be you'd be happy if you could get it yourself. I gave it to you just now. Uh, it gives me a lot of joy. Also, drinking beers in the afternoon because there's nowhere to go is just also kind of nice. You know, it's sort of my self-appointed job to point out the sunny side whenever I can. And part of the sunny side, friends, is just that, like, you know, fuck. Beers in the afternoon is not so bad. Not such a bad way to live. Remember when we were like, oh, those Europeans, they're, you know, drinking a glass of Chardonnay with their lunch or whatever. Those goddamn hedonistic Europeans and shit. And now we're all, like, putting whiskey in our coffee and shit. We're all doing that. Are we all doing that? Am I... Surely not all of us are doing it, but, 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 I'm doing it a little bit. Oh, 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 just a, oh, just a, oh, you just never, oh, mmm. Now, about usage, I don't really tell you user's manual on perfumes, and anytime I talk about it in public, I try and go over this, because motherfuckers have good intentions of smelling good and, and being uh, respectfully beautiful in the world, trying to be one of the flowers blooming in the world. Good for you. And with great power comes great responsibility. And in the fragrance world, what that means, oh, too little is so much better than too much. Okay? So I'm talking about like what I just did there. I didn't even push the button all the way down. I was like, oh, that's why it took me forever. I was like, get just a, ooh, just a e. Oh, and by the time you hear it, go, that's fine for that spot. Other ear, I go right behind the ear because it's in the hug zone, but motherfucker is not going to put their face there. If things get intimate and they put their mouth behind my ear, you know, man, where am I supposed to put this shit? It's the only place I can hide it and for that kind of situation. But those little half sprays, that's fucking plenty, especially in Colorado because we're so used to like fresh air. People are very, very sensitive to perfumes. And uh, they'll tell you they're allergic. Um, but if you wear not too much, they end up saying like, oh my God, you smell so nice. Whatever. Not allergic anymore, huh, motherfucker? Yeah, well, that's all right. So I do one behind each ear, and I do a little bit, I do one on the wrist, because I want to fucking take hits of it too. And behind my ear, this shit's going to mostly float up and behind me when I walk around or whatever. Or, but if I have it on my wrist, I can, like, take a little hit, man. I'll do that right now. Oh, God, it's so good. I love this fragrance. And, because I, you know, man, it's not easy to get me to spend, you know, 70 bucks. But at the time, uh, there were these things called gigs. And you could, like, do your art in public for the people that appreciate it. And then, like, part of the money they spend, you get and part, that was going very well for me. And, you know, the, the places that would, like, you know, have you come and perform the art, they would, like, pay you to do that. You know, and then the people there would, like, pay the bar, and it just becomes this beautiful thing that all comes around and goes around, and I go to the other shows and put my little dollars in the system, and it's just, it, that's how it used to work back, back before the quarantine kids. I know that not all of us were uh, around back then or whatever. So this was a long time ago. It's a long time ago. Way back when, before the quarantine. And um, we, we don't have that anymore. But like for a while I was doing that and, and I was starting to f do very well with it again and, and bought a perfume for myself once upon a time. And every once in a while I put it on when I'm feeling like I don't have very good resources. Or I feel like I'm um, not feeling very powerful. I put it on and it reminds me like, no, 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 things have been good. Things will be good again. That kind of a thing. I know, has everything got to be like a mystical tool? No. But boy, it's more helpful when most stuff is for me. I kind of use a lot of stuff uh, symbolically for myself in, in my story. And uh, especially perfumes. And matter of fact, one of the reasons I got into perfumes. Oh man, maybe this isn't interesting. Probably none of this was interesting. But that's not my job. That's your job, to be interested or not interested. I can't control that. Um, 
I got into perfumes because I live and work here at my home. And so um, that's a really tough thing and you can never come home from work is the other side of it. So I just needed a little bit of difference in my days. I sit in front of the same computer every day working on music or whatever. And what's the difference between a Tuesday and a Thursday at that point? There is no difference. And, and that's a, I don't want that because that keeps me from being in my present moment when everything fucking blurs together like that. So what I started doing was putting on a different perfume each day. Now I'm not talking about owning 300 plus perfumes. I'm talking about um, just having Tuesday and Thursday seem a little different on some fucking level. I don't know. It just seems like an important idea. And um, it almost is. To me, it's very useful. And, you know, maybe like Tuesday and Thursday, I'm working on the same thing, sitting in the same position, wearing different stuff maybe, but like looking at the same screen, having largely the same sensory experience. But if I fucking smell like Chanel on Tuesday and uh, Versace on Thursday, at least then there's just a little bit of a different flavor happening. And it just, it makes it easier to focus. It makes it easier to come into my present moment and really be here. Um, anyway, um, thank you very much for watching the show today. I hope that was somewhat interesting or helpful or whatever. Help yourself to some perfumes out there and try the weed. If you still haven't tried the weed, it just seems like, are you worried about what your boss used to think about it? 